Hey guys, happy Tuesday. It is May 28th, the last Tuesday in May 2024. It is about almost 11.15 a.m. Pacific time. Right now it's 11.13 a.m. And yes, I am finally back on track schedule-wise uh, with my time, my readjusting back to West Coast time, if you will, Pacific time. Um, and the reason I say that is because last week, you know, I finally, you know, like I said, got back on track, slept good and everything, got back to my own way of doing stuff and all that. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good, pretty good. I'm pretty good and everything. And I hope you all had a safe a Memorial Day weekend. And according to what my mom told me this morning when she called, uh, the first time, cause she got stuck in traffic. Uh, basically, you know, it seems everybody's coming back from the vacation or they're going on the vacation because apparently Memorial Day, um, Memorial Day weekend, that is, and Memorial Day is the start of summer break for a lot of folks. So they schedule a lot of their vacation plans, you know, around that time for when school gets out and, you know, they can take a week or two away from, you know, from work and everything to be with their family and either head to the airport and, you know, board a plane, hopefully not spirit to their, um, to the next, you know, the next destination, you know, for, you know, uh, their vacation, whether it's their favorite vacation spot or not, you know, they're planning, you know, that trip, you know, they're planning to go on that trip for the next two weeks, at least to start their summer break. But for me, this past week, it was all right. It was good. Kind of got a little bit of an assignment to take care of between now and July, because in July, it is planned as of right now for me and my older sister, maybe my niece, to go and see my dad uh, back in Kansas and see how he's doing. I mean, excuse me, he did give me a good update and all that, too, that I let them aware of. You know, he called me up and let me know that his therapy, his walking therapy, uh, was beginning uh, this past week so he could start walking properly um, with his um, elevated shoe because one one hip is, you know, shorter than the other. One, oh, his hip where he basically fell and broke it. Apparently they can't do, and I think I said this, you know, when I was out there in that little short video I did, uh, when they were uh, taking care of thing, or when they were at the gas station taking care of stuff, you know, he had to use the facility, they had to get some gas and all that and so on. Uh, but basically, uh, basically, long story short, they had informed him when we picked him up at the, at the place, uh, they had informed him that he will not need any surgery because one, the bone is too, uh, too disintegrated, if you will, if you will, too, I guess in a way it's too, you know, you know, too you know, far gone to try to risk a surgery because it might cause an infection. So what they're going to do is they're going to give him, which they did, a walking boot or walking shoe where it's like one regular shoe and then the other is an elevated shoe to where it's going to help him walk a little properly, a little, a little normal uh, than usual. It's going to help him walk a little normal than, uh, than usual right now. You know, so, so that was the only thing that I found out this past week from him to let my sister my older sister who's taking care of all this and my other sister and my niece and all of them know, hey, he's doing this now, so he's, he's good to go. He's going to be good to go soon. However long that walking therapy, you know, is in the future, you know, it all depends on him and how fast he'll be able to adjust to, you know, walking with the um, elevated uh, shoe and treating it like it's a regular shoe. Uh, but outside of that news that he gave me, you know, like I said, this past week, you know, I finally got readjusted back to the Pacific time, you know, the West Coast and everything. So I was finally able to kind of, you know, get back into my normal routine. Uh, my mom, I think 
she took no she didn't take this past Monday she, of course she had yesterday be Memorial Day off she had that off and everything and I think what she's planning to do is have the third off this Monday off as well because we have the uh, Patterson Apricot Fiesta coming up you know uh, this weekend and you can already tell because me and my mom went to my sister's on Sunday you can already tell that they're uh, cleaning things up, getting things ready to put into place for the fiesta um, going forward and everything. So it's going to be it's going to be quite a time, and I am going to have some you know stuff for the channel on there um, as well, hopefully without any issues. Uh, but with that said, with that said, though, like I said, this past week. Not too big of a deal or anything. You know, got my f second full, uh, I w w what I say? yeah, my second full um, EDD check, if you will. Got my second full one. And once again, though, uh, because I was low on money, basically I was at negative $7.86 in my account. Um, I had to go and basically take money out and put it into my uh, checking account for my bank. But what's crazy is that it seems certain banks will not take the EDD Money Network card they're issuing out now. So what I have to do is I have to go to a bank that will take it, you know, deal with a fee that they're going to put out. But then, you know, after dealing with that fee, you know, take the money out that I need go over to uh, my bank or walk back over to the store that has an ATM for my bank, put the money in and be done with it. And what's crazy is two weeks ago or a couple weeks ago, uh, yeah, I think it was about two, you know, actually it was about three weeks ago, three weeks ago basically because we left at the beginning of May to go see my dad. What's crazy is I go and I go through this routine that I went through last Monday, right? So I go through this routine, you know, to where I have to go to the BMO, the Bank of Montreal, because all the Bank of the Rest facilities change to BMO. So I go there, I take the money out and everything, and I go back over to the ATM, which is my bank over, you know, that's located at the Knob Hill, Excuse me there if you heard anything. I do apologize. Um, that might have been just me. But anyway, you know, I go over to the, you know, the ATM over at Knob Hill for my bank. And this is three weeks ago, right? And what happens is the BM, what happens is the bank there, the bank there, if you will, uh, will not, and I repeat, not be able to take my deposit or anything. Now you could do the touch screen and everything with the card, but it will not take a deposit. You can insert the card as well, but it will not take a deposit. Mm -hmm. And that's a notification there. I do apologize if you heard anything. Uh, and that's an apology as well to headphone users. If you're listening through your headphones, you know, that's just, you know, what's going on lately. Ever since I got this new phone, it's been doing a lot more than what my other phone used to do and that's basically it's keeping up to date with a lot of the notifications the emails and and all that but anyway in the text messages and all that so i do apologize uh but anyway like i said getting back on track what happened is that you know what happened basically is that you know they you know i couldn't deposit any money like i can insert the card i could use the touch thing you know, the contactless, you know, uh, Wi-Fi signal thing and all that. But I couldn't deposit any money. I couldn't even withdraw money. And the reason for that is I think the day prior, because it was Cinco de Mayo, you know, three weeks ago, um, I had to basically, I think what happened, I should say, not me, but well, I'm trying to find my find the right correct, correct words to say because I'm, of course, doing this, you know, unscripted, you know, you know shoot style, if you will. Uh, but what happened, um, any, what happened basically is, uh, mainly, you know, 
um, what I'm thinking is on Cinco de Mayo weekend, you know, a lot of people took money out and it drained that ATM. So I'm thinking, okay, fine. So what we do, me and my mom, because she took uh, the day after Cinco de Mayo off um, as well, because we all because on Cinco de Mayo, we also went to a baby uh, gender reveal for my oldest nephew and his wife, my niece-in-law. So she, the next day, because she was off, we went to we went to Save Mart and to Walmart. Save Mart has, you know, the ATM from my bank as well as a little bank, you know, area there as well where you could talk to tellers and, and all that. So I go there, put my money in, and what's crazy is they have two ATM, right? They have two ATMs for my bank, as, you know, right as well as a little um, locale there, you know, within the store. So I go there. It has two ATMs. Only one's working because the other's out of order. Again, probably because of Cinco de Mayo. So I'm thinking, okay, fine. You know, at least I can put my money in. That's what I did. And then, you know, I'm thinking, okay, my problems... Uh, you know, my problems I dealt with, I'm good, I'm fine, nothing, no big issues, right? Then what happens, you know, last Monday, you know, once again, my bank doesn't want to take the money network cards. I'm thinking, okay, obviously now I know what to do just in case something like this happens again. So my bank doesn't want to take the money network card. Okay, fine, no problem. Guess Guess what happens, okay? Guess what happens? So I go and do the routine again because this time around I'm in the negative, right? I'm in the negative. Uh, the last time it's because I needed the money right away, you know, because I was going to be out of town. So, okay, I go. It's in the negative. So I go this time around, though, because, uh, you know, I'm back first, you know, first EDD, you know, deposit since I've been back from Kansas. So I go... So I go to the so I go to the BMO because once again my bank the ATM for my bank is not going to take anything. So I go to the BMO, the Bank of Montreal, you know here in town. I take the money out and I go to my ATM. Right, go back to my ATM, and I find out on both occasions, you know, because I'm thinking maybe it's a glitch. Maybe they gotta do maintenance, and while I'm getting my money, they're gonna have a, they're gonna have a maintenance guy take care of it. Nothing happens. Nothing happens between that time frame. So anyway, I again I go through the same routine I did two weeks prior to last Monday, and again, like I said, this time around I'm negative seven dollars ninety six cents. So I want to make sure I don't get no you know make sure I want to make sure I don't get no overdraft charge right. So, long story short, not to, not to make it sound any more confusing than what it is, I do what I did two weeks prior. I go this time to my bank, to the ATM for my bank, and yes, this time it's working where I can deposit money. But what happens? What happens, ladies and gentlemen? Get this: is the contactless portion of the card and the machine, the one with that little Wi-Fi signal, whatever you want to call it doesn't work so i have to insert my card it's like okay fine good thing bright side i can deposit money negative side negative side to that is if you like contactless you know if you like the contactless option you can't use the contactless option on the atm because it's broken so yeah not only does my bank not take the EDD card and everything, the money network card, you know, but, you know, this time around, unlike last time, I can deposit my money. It's just the contactless option of it, you know, which makes it easier for folks, you know, because, you know, when you put your card into the ATM, you don't know if you're going to lose it or you're going to, you know, or, or you're going to lose it or something's going to happen, right? The contactless option, <laughs> believe it or not, is not working. But at least I'm able to put my money in. So, yeah, as convoluted as that may have sounded, you know, that, you know, that's the only thing that happened this past week outside of my dad telling me, hey, 
I'm going to do my therapy soon again, you know, for my walking boots, my walking shoes, so I can try to walk properly, you know, once again. So, yeah, those are the only things that happened this past week. Outside of that and being assigned with a new task to try to help locate where my dad's older sister is, my aunt out there, because apparently she's in a facility, but it's either in Salina, Kansas or Clay Center, Kansas. I'm going to take my time between now and July, which, as I said earlier, I believe, is when me and my sister and maybe my oldest niece are going to go out and see him. Um, excuse me. Uh, um, you know, I'm given the opportunity to, you know, without anything coming up, to look up some of these areas and see whether or not, hey, is my aunt so-and-so there? You know, just because you know, that's the last he's heard, according to what he said. You know, that's what he last he's heard. It's either Salina, Kansas, which has a lot of these nursing assistant living facilities, or is it Clay Center? It's one of the two. But anyway, anyway, long story short, that's the only thing that happened this past week outside of me re finally being readjusted back to my regular scheduled uh, time slot, if you will, time frame, if you will. You know, that's that's the only thing. You know, that's the only thing. And, um, yeah, it's been, you know, it's been, an, you know, it's been an all right week and everything, except if you're my mom, it's just been one of those weeks that just adds to the, it just adds to the horrendous year, uh, you know, unorganized, disorganized year that our schools had. Yeah, it just adds to it. And the reason I say that is because it seems that to her, this year has not been the best year that, you know, uh, CAPE that she works for, the overall people she works for in her facility under CAPE BP um, has ever had. It's not been one of the best years. One, because in any Head Start preschool program, according to her, your, your case managers that are supposed to come in and check things you know, and have a meeting, an update meeting to see what's going on, to see what can be improved, have not been doing that. Usually, according to my mom, they have one every month. They have a case manager meeting every month to see what needs to be worked on, what kids need to be uh, talked to, you know, with their parents and everything and all that. Not once have they had one every month. According to my mom, the fortunate enough, the fortunate if they've had, I should say, one or two a year this year, you know, one or two this year. And that's not good. And apparently the parents of some of these kids are not being reasonable either. One parent didn't like the fact that her kid wasn't, I guess, being given special treatment because her rear end wasn't wiped properly. And one of the things the teachers are meant to do here is teach the kids how to use the restroom and wipe the rear ends on their own. You know, it's not up to the teachers unless the kid physically can't do it or, you know, and everything or mentally can't do it or whatever. And it's like, you know, this parent is not happy. So what does this parent do? She takes the kid out, but she also wants to talk to management. And my mom's like, and she even got praised for this. She says, well, management's right over there next door. They move next door to us if you want to talk to them. And she got praised from her fellow teachers being like, good job for you doing that. You know, letting this lady know, hey, if you want to complain, go over there. Go over there. And she doesn't know whether or not that lady, that parent, that mother got in contact with them or not. But it's like, it's just been one of those years. And then today, according to her, because she called me before... You know, I did the recording, or when I did the original recording, and I had to erase that. Uh, basically, she tells me as of today, another parent takes their kid out as well. You know, and all because the kid got a poke in the eye or a little scrape or something like that. And it's like, you know, look, they have, you know, such, such and such ratio of kids. You know, they have such and such ratio of kids you know, that they have to work with, they can't just be focusing on one over the other. So, so yeah, it's, you know, it's been one of those years to where the parents are not making it easy for them. And, you know, along with other parents and stuff throughout the year, it's just been like one of those 
one of the one of the, it's been one of those you know years to where things have been the most as my mom puts it the most disorganized it's ever been. And if that's not enough, my mom finds out that you know the facility that they work at under Cape is going to get taken over originally throughout the summer by one of the public schools um, year-round programs. And my mom's thinking, okay, fine, that's good. You know, we'll be out of school, they can take over, and then we can come back and get our, you know, get our facility back, right? Well, even that doesn't go off without a hitch because then she finds, because then last week or two weeks ago, they find out that, oh, by the way, we're going to have to up the start date for the usage of your facility, your BP facility under Cape for the public school of Livermore a lot sooner because that public school is getting a renovation and remodel. And they have to bump that up a lot sooner. So what does this do? This interferes with my mom's programming, my mom and her fellow teachers programming, and it causes uh, some of this stuff to either be upped or backed up, you know, by a few days. Because usually, as far as I know, because I've been living with my mom since 2007, November 2007, usually every year, as far as I know, from 2008, every year it's been the second Tuesday of June that they get out. And the second Tuesday would have been, you know, June 14th. So what happens here because of the situation? Apparently, from what I'm understanding, they have to bump everything back by a few days to where the kids' celebration has to be on the 14th and the teacher's last day has to be on the 19th. And by the way, the 19th is a Wednesday. It is a Wednesday. And that doesn't, you know, that doesn't seem, you know, that doesn't feel and seem traditional, if you know what I mean. It throws them off. It throws a lot of what they're doing off. So yeah, that that doesn't help. That's not making things easy because now they don't know exactly where they're going to go. Like, are they going to be able to get a certain building or part of the building, like the management part of the building, you know, to work in with the kids? Or are they going to have to do something else? They're going to have to have the kids out all day. We don't know. We don't know. So it's going to be it's going to be very it's going to be a very interesting time in the next few weeks. The only thing my mom has to be glad about this week is this is the last week they have to make any of the lunches. You know, she's like, oh, thank God, no more lunch making, you know. But, but yeah, it's just one of those situations to where it's like, you know, this, this has not been the best year. And some of the teachers are venting, from what I can tell, are venting like, we don't want to be here anymore. We don't want to be here anymore, you know, after this year. And they usually, according to my mom, they usually say this every year because it's the, the way of venting, the frustrating. You know, the frustrated, I should say, with what's going on. So, what does my mom do? Well, my mom, yesterday, with my help, takes this assessment thing, you know, that they put on Paylocity for their job. And she just, you know, she only types in one thing of what needs to be improved on, and that's it. Everything else, she's like, well, yeah, I'm... Uh, medium, you know, uh, I exceed, uh, medial exceed, you know, and all that, kind of like a ranking deal. And that's it. You know, that's it. And apparently her fellow teachers don't know exactly what, how to deal with it because some of them are still being like, oh, are we supposed to do an evaluation? What's going on? Da, da, da. It's just been one of those years. One of those years, you know? Because it seems that CAPE is more invested in money more so than anything else. And that they teach, and then here's the thing, and I think this is the one thing I noticed when, you know, she found out about this, when she heard about this at her job, apparently you don't treat the parents as, you know, parents. You treat them as customers. I heard that from my mom and I'm thinking, that's the first time I've ever heard education of, of any kind to say, hey, the parent's a customer. What, is they, what do they think they are? A freaking retail store? I'm just saying. You know, I'm just saying. It feels it feel, it feel like strange hearing my mom say that that's how they want to reference them. As I get myself some more coffee, I do apologize for 
to the headphone users when they heard that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it felt kind of strange to me hearing that. I'm thinking, yeah, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't compute. But yeah, you know, things have just been very disorganized and hopefully things will get more better next year or something like that. But it, here's the thing. You know, when she told me about some of the things that have been happening there at the school, when she told me that, you know, especially with the kids, you know, and how they would, you know, one kid would, you know, pinch somebody, pinch some kids or poke them in the eye, even to unbeknownst to the mother and everything, who's one of the nicest mothers, gets, you know, a lot of the teachers, including my mom, Starbucks cards, you know, for her gratefulness for them taking in her kid to teach, teach her kid. Um... You know, you have that, you have a kid that's on his way to kindergarten that's whining and crying, you know, like a baby. Some kids that are going to kindergarten that are still sucking on pacifiers, bottles, wearing diapers. And it is just, it has just been one of those situations to where me, my sisters, my niece, my oldest niece and my oldest nephew to an extent have echoed all the same thing. That it feels like what they're doing is they're turning, you know, the the BP facility and maybe some of the other facilities under Cape, you know, in the region where my mom works and maybe even across the board and, you know, as far as the U.S. goes, it feels like they're turning them more into special ed facilities than treating them like regular Head Start preschool facilities with some of the kids they are allowed to, you know, take in or the or, now, uh, are, hold on. I'm trying to find the right word to say. A lot of the, due to the fact that they, due to the fact that they take in a lot of these kids, that you know they're allowed to be taken in, that are not ready for public school of any kind, because that's what Head Start preschools are supposed to do. They're supposed to get you ready for that public school environment. I mean, when I was homeschooled by my mom, she made sure to homeschool me for at least what one or two years, so that she knew with my issues. You know, my bowel issues because of the Hirschhorn's disease and my ADHD, which as adults, we may have it as kids and still have a bit of it as teenagers. But and even as adults, we still have it a tiny bit. But due to my bowel issues, my Hirschhorn's disease situation what, that caused my bowel issues and everything. And, and, then, and again, like I said, due to my ADHD, you know, my mom made sure to keep me homeschooled for at least one or two years, you know, because she knew if she would have just sent me out there right away, it'd be a disaster. So I, you know, so when my mom tells me these things, I'm thinking, you know, why don't these parents just keep their kids at home, homeschool them to the best of their abilities before they send them out? You know, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I mean, my, my oldest niece, her daughter is going to be what, like four this year, she's going to be four, and her oldest daughter is very smart. She takes off to her mom when it comes to her vocabulary and stuff. But I'm also looking at the fact that she's not put her into preschool at Head Start yet because she knows that even though she's smart and everything, she's not ready for that. She's not ready to take that next step yet because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. She doesn't know what's going to happen. Excuse me there. And mainly because the, the reason she feels like this, in my opinion, you know, I could be wrong, but the reason she feels about this is because of the fact that it's not that she feels that her daughter could handle it. Her daughter could probably, you know, abundantly over exceed, you know, as far as those preschool Head Start kids are concerned. But it's more along the lines of, you know, she still, she still basically kind of has her tendencies to like when she visits her grandma, my older sister, there are times when her, my niece and her fiance are ready to leave. You know, their daughter isn't. Their daughter would just run off of you like, no, I want to stay here and everything. And it's like, okay, that's an issue, right? That's an issue, but it's one that can be easily fixed. So I look at things like that to where it's like, that could be easily fixed at home and over time. But they don't want to, but because of something like that, they don't want to put her in just yet. You know what I'm saying? Again, not saying she wouldn't succeed because believe me, my, my great niece, whoo. She put a lot of the kids my mom my mom works with right now, and I say with all due respect, she put a lot of those kids to shame. You know, with her over abundance of the you know of exceedness, if you know what I mean. She put them to shame. But anyway, 
Anyway, you know, I can understand why she's not doing that. The same reason I understand my mom didn't want to do it with me. And you think that these teachers would understand that. I mean, not teachers, but these parents would understand, hey, my kid still has this problem. I can't let them go out and be part of this head start so they get it under control. But nope. Cape says, hey, we'll take them. We'll take them. It's all because they care about money. They don't care about nothing else. You know, that's what my mom and her fellow teachers feel. They don't care about them. They care about the money. And that's it. But yeah, she only has about, you know, this week, next week, the week after. She's got basically got, you know, three and a half weeks to go. Three and a half weeks to go. Or three weeks mainly to go. And that's it. And I guarantee you, her and those fellow teachers are looking at that clock, crossing off those days on that calendar and be like, the sooner we get out of here for the summer, the better. You know, the sooner we get out, the better. And that's about it. But anyway, that's what's going on with, you know, her situation. And just keep her situation at her job in prayer because it needs all the prayer it could get, believe me. Now... With that said, speaking of her getting off in June, June is this Saturday. That's right. We're finally entering June. And, um, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting because, like I said, June 19th is going to be, uh, it's going to be the last day. Excuse me there. It's going to be the last day. I'm trying to think about what I was going to say. June 19th is going to be the last day for her for before her summer break. And... It's going to be, it's going to be an interesting month. It's going to be an interesting two months. And I'll let you know more as we get closer, because what I may do is, you know, basically do, uh, and I was doing this when I went and did the vacation, when I was out in, uh, I wouldn't say vacation, but out visiting my dad in Kansas. I'm probably going to do some content while I upload it, you know, to the channel, you know, but set it to premiere at certain days. So at least you get one or two. Uh, bits of content uh, throughout the week, and, you know, especially if I'm out doing stuff and everything with my mom, my family, or whatever. So I'll probably end up doing that. I end up doing that and everything. I will tell you this, as I mentioned earlier, um, the fiesta is this weekend, so I will get some content on Saturday. It'll might be, it might be live streamed. It may not be live streamed. You'll have to wait and see, but it will. Uh, be here on the on my on the YT channel to so keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for that. And again, I'll let you in on more of what's going on throughout the week and everything, so that way you guys can um, kind of you know keep an eye on what's happening and see what I might bring up and talk about uh, down the line. Um, I will also, come June 25th, I will let you know that I will do a live stream talking about what I see so far with Me TV Tunes once I tune it in, like a lot of you will. Getting more coffee there. Um, I will do that. That's a no-brainer. And again, in between then and then, then, you know, then and the beginning of June to Saturday, it's just going to be a toss-up outside of some of the things I've mentioned. You know, I will give you a live, maybe a live shot or look at the fireworks display wherever we're going to see it. And that's really all I can say. That's really all I can uh, bring up right now. Um, not really much outside of that. Not really much outside of that. Um, I will probably, the way things are looking right now, probably by the end of July because I should be back by then anyway. <laughs> um, by the end of July, I might be heading back to Coles. Might be heading back to Coles and working there, and that's going to help out in the long run too. So I'm just letting you guys know that there are certain things that might be on the you know, agenda down the line and what I am planning out for uh, June and just going to be playing it by year um, as well. But June 19th is when things are kind of going into that change of pace like they do every year, you know, to where it's like, okay, here, you know, it's like here, we're doing this, we're doing that, da, 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 you know, and everything. And it's going to probably one of those situations, like I said, where I'm going to have to upload some content, but set it to premiere, you know, in the, you know, throughout the summer, you know, 
um, as we progress and everything. Basically, it'll be content that I might do starting next week and then just upload it, schedule it for the rest of the summer. So like I said, you get like one or two or maybe three pieces of content a day. So you guys can have something throughout and I don't have to worry about not providing you with content. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, anyway, though, I just wanted to let you know that that's what's being planned. And again, the rest will play by ear. But um, as far as, you know, channel updates go, that's about it. And vlogs go, that's about it. Thank you guys all for tuning in and listening. And I will talk to you all later. If you probably noticed in the title, Super Chats were open. And Super Things are open even after the premiere of this video. And check out my Teespring store as well. That helps out a lot. And my affiliated stores have I put in there um, as well. But until next time, guys, give me there again. But until next time, guys, I will get some more content out later. But until then, I'll talk to you all later.